7.30 on a Friday morning pre-recorded show. I do believe it's about time to go to the lines. Hope you all having a great day today. Brian White? Yes, sir. What in the world are you up to today, son? <laughs> today I am up to uh, staring out my window uh, <laughs> and a beautiful sunny day up here in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. Mount Juliet, uh, which is uh, east of... Uh, uh, Nashville, uh, uh, an area that's really grown over the last several years. I, I, I believe the, uh, yeah. the, the old fiddle player himself, uh, Charlie Daniels, uh, lived out that way. Yes, he sure did. And, uh, yeah, it's grown quite a bit. I, I lived out this direction initially when I, uh, for about 24 years, and then I had moved to Pleasant View, Tennessee, which oh, yeah. is a little northwest. Right. Uh, and, uh, but we happened upon, um, a piece of property, some land here in Mount Julie, which was unheard of. Uh-huh. Uh, a songwriting buddy of mine that lives right next door to me, actually, Will Nance, is a hit songwriter. He let me know about this property, and so we moved a year ago, and it's been a work in process, you know. But we are uh, we're loving it here. It's a beautiful day, and uh, feel like uh, the Lord dropped a little piece of heaven in on me. Well, Brian, yeah, and and he it sounded like he did, but you know, I, I also think about getting out of the hustle and bustle of Nashville. I know oh, yeah. Mount Juliet's uh, still a, a big area, but still, you, you're getting away from that and kind of nestling into. Can you think clear? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, we sit on the back patio at night, my wife and I, and just kind of it's like a big deep breath, you know. Uh, it is Nashville has grown so much. I've been here thirty. Six years, I guess, as wow. the songwriter, and uh, you know it, it's gotten you know crazy, uh, and the tr- the town has changed so much, and so this is kind of like um, like I said, you, you get out here and you take a big deep breath and re- get your thoughts together, and and uh, we love it, we love it. You know, I, I think about what you just told me. You've been there thirty six years, so over three decades, you've seen some huge changes. Uh, in the in Nashville itself, but also in the what what kind of music was played 36 years ago to uh, uh, through even today. And 36 years ago, you'd go to uh, 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 Music Row to Curb or, or or Sony and pitch your songs. You don't do that anymore, do you? No, nah, no. Nah, <laughs> we used to be able to write a song and go, "Hey, so and so." across the street cutting at this studio let's walk this over there and play it for them or hey i i, I know so and so in in the the uh, a and r department at rca right and you call them up and they'd say bring it up here and play it for me and and now there's a lot of gatekeepers and a lot of hoops you jump through and if you can just fortunate enough to have had some longevity and some uh successes that I still have those open doors with a lot of people, but it's not like it used to be. It's just way different. Of course, I'm, I'm looking at some information right here, and a lot of time I just like to hear this information from you, but let me share it with our audience. 16 number ones, two Dove Awards, CSAC Song of the Year, as well as ACM, CMA, and Grammy nom- nominations. Yeah, I'd say uh, what what you got into, uh, you've been successful at. <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, I, I guess I just was stubborn enough to, to not leave when I wasn't having success, and the Lord finally said, "Hey, I'm going to give you some." So I, I don't know. Um, I, it, it's it's an honor for me to uh, be able to do what I do on a daily basis, and uh, and I feel so blessed. I I kind of started, you know, I was in I was a youth pastor when I first moved to this town, really, and uh, and and I signed. Uh, long story short, I. I signed a, a record deal with a Christian record label and a publishing deal because I was singing at youth conferences and camps as a part of my ministry. Right. And uh, and that just one thing led to another. And, and uh, other artists started wanting to record my music. And, and uh, I came off the road and toured full-time for about 15 years and uh, did five records. Uh, we were... I jokingly say that we were Bon Jovi for Jesus. We we were, you know, I had a good mullet back in the day. Right. And, uh, but uh, I always uh, always loved the creative process, and so I signed with uh, BMG Music, and that was where uh, they kind of introduced me to, like, well, you know, some of these songs can be kind of country, and, and uh, 
So I started down that path a little bit, writing some country music as well. And uh, my first big cut in country music was with Trace Atkins. Wow. And uh, uh, and that was my first single, too. It was a song called Rough and Ready, and uh, I wrote it with a, a huge songwriter here in, in Nashville, a guy named Craig Weissman. And, uh, yeah. and that, just kind of, that kind of jump-started that side of things. And so I, I write... Uh, still to this day, my wife is a Christian artist and tours, mm -hmm. and and I write and produce her records, and uh, and I write for a lot of CCM artists. I write for a lot of Southern gospel artists. I don't know if you're familiar with the Southern gospel field at all, uh, but um, uh, and then I still write, you know, obviously on the countryside, and so it it gives me an opportunity to just kind of be diverse, which I love. I don't feel like I'm pigeonholed. I feel like every day I get up and. I get to create and catch what's in the room, and uh, so it's been it's been a good uh, it's been a good career, and I'm still, you know, going at it every day. So uh, it's, it's the, the train's not slowing down. Let's <laughs> let's go back to Trace Atkins when you the, the, that first uh, hit with Trace Atkins. Did did you pitch that song to Trace or his A and R or how did how did that come about? Well. My, we went on a songwriting retreat and uh, for BMG at the time where I was signed, and right. me and Craig got in a room together with another guy from England, and uh, we wrote it. And that was back when you were making work tapes. We did a work <laughs> tape on a cassette, yeah. and, I, and I took it home and gave it to uh, my publisher. was like, well, let me hear what you guys wrote. And I had this cassette, and she was like, wow, I love this. And she had a relationship with Scott Hendricks. Oh, yeah. And she knew that she knew that uh, Trace was um, looking at the time, and so uh, and she said, "Well, I'm gonna send this over to uh, his label. I know some people over there." And it just sent the work tape. We didn't even demo the song. It was just me and Craig doing a work tape, mm -hmm. and uh, that was on a Tuesday. <laughs> and on he wrote right back and said, "I'm gonna send this to Trace. He's out on the road." And then on Thursday, Trace called and said, I love this. I'm cutting this on Monday. And so it was that fast. Wow. It, it was not the typical way of things happening, uh, which, again, goes back to what we were talking about earlier. It, the town has changed so much in the way things are done. But that was the way it was done. You, you had a relationship, and, and you could get it in someone's hand, and they could get it right to the artist. And, uh, and that was my first country cut. I thought, you know... It, Wow, that was easy. <laughs> like that. You know, that, man, if you, if you love that, I got more where that came from. And <laughs> so, uh, but uh, it was um, it was an unusual situation. But uh, right off the work tape, but, uh, rough but, cassette tape. But and, uh, but Brian, next, you know, they're in the studio cutting it. Brian, with that being so easy, was the next uh, hit as easy, or did? Did it take a while? And who, who, who was the second? Well, now, I won't go the, through every one of them, but who, who was the, the next one? Was it that easy? Uh, no, it wasn't. I mean, and I think the next one uh, on the countryside was with Neil McCoy. Yeah. And uh, and Neil, uh, and, the, and the funny story behind that, um, we had written a song. Um, I went in to, to write that day, and I had an idea in my head about uh, Kale's from the tailgate. I was mm -hmm. just like, you know, old boys sitting around on the tailgate oh, in the yeah. pickup truck telling tales about life. And I walked out of the room to get coffee and I came back and my my uh, songwriting buddies that were with me said, uh, hey man, we got a different take on that. I said, okay. And they said, instead of tales from the tailgate, how about tales on the tailgate? And I was like, well, we're talking about different tales, man. We're talking about rear ends. <laughs> you know, and laugh. And they said, yeah, man, that's country music. And so we wrote this song about tales on the tailgate, you know, that an old boy that had a truck that he'd seen a lot of good times on yeah. it, and pretty girls and party guys and that kind of thing. And and, and Neil cut it, and that, and that was going to be my next single. And it was. They singled it. And uh, I thought, man, I, this is here we go again. And uh, there was an old, not an old DJ at the time, but a guy here in Nashville, Jerry House. Mm -hmm. On the, he, he was his, he was a Hall of Fame kind of yeah now you know DJ and he played that song on a morning where they did one of those kind of cash it or trash it kind of things do you like it or do you don't call in let us know mm -hmm. and, and I remember driving in that day and, and I heard that and I thought oh this is going to be great and I'm going to find out 
And the first few calls were some ladies that were like, well, we think that song's a little too uh, uh, sexual. I guess. Yeah. And, and, and I'm yelling at my radio saying, well, have you heard, <laughs> you know, honky tonk, the donkey donk? Have you heard, you know? And uh, But the next day, the Tennessean had a big thing with the entertainment section saying, Neil McCoy pushing the envelope with his new single. And, uh, and it was funny because it was moving up chart. And, and at that moment, the next day, it kind of, as we say, it's either climbing with a bullet or dropping with an anchor. Yeah. And, uh, and it and it picked up the anchor. <laughs> wow. So, so that that was my next single, but it didn't do as well. And then it kind of, you know, I, you, you kind of spurred around because singles are hard to come by. Well, it sounds like it's been a, a fun, fun uh, writing or fun uh, career for you. Hey, hold on on the line. Uh, we, we got some more talking to do there, so just hold on on the uh, line of Brian White. We'll I'll be, be right. I'll be right here. Thank you, brother. Right. Y'all, y'all hold on, folks. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show on Friday. Let me give you a clue that I failed to give you at 7.30. Keys to summer. Add up or separate numbers you must flow. But getting the right combo is where you go. Add up or separate numbers you must flow. But getting the right combo combo is where you go. Go. That was brother. Brian, thanks for holding on there, brother. Appreciate, appreciate you being with us. Hey, man. This, we got Sandra on here, too? Yeah, we're talking about our plans for next year, so I'll let you guys have it. <laughs> Lord have mercy. We, we not even finished the second year, and here we go already planning next year. This going to be a good one. I love, I love these ideas that I get from these folks. They're amazing. So, well, anyway, is, I'm going to let you guys have it. Okay, thank you, Sandra. Thanks, Sandra. Hey, but but Brian, she she's right. You know, you you and these other songwriters have have been all over. You've uh, you've written with so many different folks, uh, and you're still doing it. But I, I think about what you said a while ago about being, uh, you know, getting up every morning and, and got direction. It doesn't have to be just country. It doesn't have to be just this. So you're diversified to where you can continue what you do. Well, it it feels good because sometimes doing uh, something that has, obviously you need a target that you, you aim at, but for me, the target is just writing a great song, it, and, and it could be for a country artist or a pop artist. I was just telling Sandra right now, I mean, I, I've written a lot in the Christian market and still do, and then in the Southern Gospel market, I'm uh, this week, just got the news this morning, uh, I, I wrote a song for a Southern Gospel group called Brian Free and Assurance, and um and then they have a feature on there with Jimmy Fortune. Oh, Jimmy, wow. Obviously, you know, from the Statler Brothers. Right. And, uh, and our song has been at number one for five weeks now. So uh, wow. that was kind of a fun thing. And, that, you know, I didn't target a Southern Gospel song that morning. We just, that's just kind of where things went. And so every every day is like unwrapping a present. Like, okay, well, let's see what we're going to do today. It, is Jimmy singing the lead on that song that you wrote? Uh, yeah, Jimmy sings the second verse, and uh, and then he sings harmonies all through it. Uh, Brian Free is the lead singer for that group, and he sings the first verse. But uh, they got a really great video out on it. Uh, song called "Looks Like Jesus," mm -hmm. and uh, just uh, so it's, it's like I said, it's been at number one for five weeks now in the Southern Gospel charts. But you so know, we're, we're thrilled with that. I think about a Jimmy uh, Fortune. Uh, he and Nina, uh, you know, still involved in his wife Nina still involved in yep. you know of course being with the Statler brothers and those guys uh, retired some of them have since passed away but he's still getting to, to carry on from Elizabeth that he wrote to, to oh, what yeah. he's what he's doing now but he's doing so much more with the Christian uh, uh, work and also southern gospel and he just he's like you sound like you he gets up every morning and says hey what's new today you know, and he's such a great guy. I mean, he's such a kind spirit. Oh, yeah. Uh, so when they called and said, hey, 
Jimmy Fortune's going to feature on your song. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that, that's <laughs> one of those bucket list things. I, I had a Earl Scruggs set years ago, and and, uh, and that was one of those, you know, I, I told somebody, I said, I don't care if it sells three records. That's Earl Scruggs. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you ever... And, did you ever come in contact with uh, the, his son Randy, or have any dealings with Randy over the years? Well, I, I, I mean, I, I know him from just it's some casual, you know, business, uh, you know, uh, music industry kind of things. But uh, I did not know him well. But uh, yes, sure, everybody knows Randy. Yeah. R- Randy was such a. Of course, we lost him a few years ago, but he was such yeah. a. He was a great producer. Uh, but he was such yep. a great guitarist, you know, playing on the Dukes of Hazard, uh, you know, uh, uh, th- that intro with him. But he was such a wow. great uh, mu- uh, guitarist. But he 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 kind of was born into the family, wasn't he? Yep, he sure was. He sure was. Yeah, and and that's uh, a legacy that uh, still lives on. You know, right. everybody knows that name. So it's uh, well, and, and it's good, good stuff. But Brian White, everybody knows Brian White too. That's but you didn't do it overnight. <laughs> no, it took. You know, I like I said, I, I toured 15 years, and, and then when I came off the road and really started writing full time. But all the time I was touring, I was still writing for a lot of artists, and uh, and I love that concept. And the funny thing was, um, I, I obviously you would know this. You know what I I would show up to do my my concerts and people would say now you're the christian brian white or the country brian white wow uh, uh and so because b-r-y-a-n white obviously had a big career in the 90s in mm-hmm. country music oh and, yeah and so people were confusing me as him and him as me and and uh so we we became friends and i'd have people come up to me at concert so what's it like to sing shania twain i said well i don't know you're gonna have to ask the other guy <laughs> uh, we would laugh and uh but you know, it's been a great, uh, and it is a great—I uh, don't want to call it a job because no. I work. And my, my father-in-law always said, "Find something you love to do and do it every day, and you'll never work a day in your life." I agree. I, I don't feel like I work. It's—it's it's, uh, it's something that I just feel blessed to get to do, and then to go out and sing, and, and, and like what we're going to do here at the, uh, the Songwriter Festival. I play a lot of songwriter festivals mm-hmm. across the country. <clears throat> And it's such a unique opportunity for people to hear the songs from the people that wrote them. A lot of times, you know, people think the artists write all the songs, and and that's not necessarily so. I have a few that I've written with the artists. Uh, Watching You with Rodney Atkins, uh, I wrote with Rodney for that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but uh, the latest thing I had with Jason Aldean, well, Jason doesn't write, but uh, but he, he loves good songs. And so you just hope you, you, know, you write some and... Uh, so it's just, you know, I, I love to get out there and be able to sit on a, a, a stool and tell the story behind the song and then sing the song. And the songwriting festivals are those opportunities. And people that love music and, and want to hear the heart and soul of the song, that's what happens during these festivals. And and I, so we're, you know, what's going to happen down there with you guys is going to be a great thing. And I think that's what we want to hear. We, we want to hear the song, but then when we can go behind the scene and hear about the song, I think it makes us appreciate that song and, of course, the songwriter a whole lot more. Brian, uh, whether you're the Christian or the country, I guess if somebody were to ask me, are you the Christian, Brian, or White, or the country, my answer would be yes. Uh, so look yes, forward to exactly. look forward to uh, meeting you and the rest of you guys and gals coming in here, and uh, still much success to you and your wife and your career, my friend. Well, thank you so much, and man, God bless you guys, and we're looking forward to being there and uh, and having a good time with the folks down there, and uh, just uh, know that when you come, you're going to hear from the heart. I know, I, I, I know that. So thank you. That, so, so we're going to have some fun with it, and it's going to be a good time. Thank you for your time today, and look forward again to y'all being here. Uh, be safe, be cool. All righty, I will. You guys stay cool down there, too. <laughs> See you, Brian. All right. All right, bye-bye. All righty. As we wrap up another Songwriters Week, I'm just enjoying the heck out of uh, talking to these guys and gals. We'll be right back to wrap up the show.